Yo, yo, boxing aficionados. What's up? What's going on? Part two of the Mayor Ryan fight card breakdown. It's supposed to be for Top Prank Tuesdays, but here we are on Wednesday night. <laughs> Before I, I got to get the discipline right. You know what? That reminds me of something that Fred from Barbershop Conversation said, man. That guy's growing on me as a person as far as his videos and his mentality. Um, he said something about the importance of discipline. And for anything that, that you want to be successful at, you got to have discipline. And uh, he said that even in doing his shows, the, 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 the his YouTube show, to show up, it, you know, on a, a given night and say, boom, um, this is going to be done seven o'clock or whatever, or whatever time you deem um, the deadline you give yourself is a very important thing, man. And now, uh, yeah, got to take that to heart. But that's neither here nor there. Let's go. Finishing with Shushu. Shushu Carrington. Sagawa. I found out, I'm glad I'm doing this because Sagawa I find out, found out that Sagawa had actually fought as high as lightweight. Of course, he didn't actually make the lightweight limit. He came in at, I think it was like 131 or 133 for a fight versus Jermaine Ortiz. So he fought Jermaine Ortiz and I was impressed. He had another fight. Oh, again, Abraham Nova uh, at 130. So Sagawa at 126. Not that he's a little uh, 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 weight bully, but I could tell, I could see how he can go in there and ragdoll Ruben Villa. Ruben Villa, who is highly touted, was on the precipice of fighting Ray Vargas for the WBC belt. Uh, Suleiman Sagawa comes in, derails that dream, and gets to fight Shushu Carrington uh, next. Uh, Shushu Carrington gets that guy next for the right to now face Ray Vargas. Uh, Shushu Carrington has a, a WBO lesser belt, you know, one of those NWBO or whatever. Or, uh, he has also an NABF title, you know, for the IBF. So he's he's to get those ranking uh, uh, qualif qualifying belts to become a contender and, and be on, on, on those uh, different sanctioning bodies. But this is important. This is the WBC belt. Not only because it's the WBC belt, that's not just the importance, but the name attached to that belt is Ray Vargas. If Shushu Carrington can get a fight with Ray Vargas, he will have put on his resume a well-known Mexican, a well-known long-standing Mexican champion. Ray Vargas is a really good name. A lot of people don't like the way he fights, but he's been a champion for quite a while now at 126. He's no pushover. It's the kind of win, if he would were to be successful, that no one can say, uh, you know, poo poo, or that he doesn't. He never fought nobody. Who's he fought? It would be the best name on his resume. Actually, it would probably be the best name on anybody's resume at 126 quite frankly right so i it would be hoove top rank it would be hoove top rank to make that fight against ray vargas go ahead and go up the wbc route it would be the smartest play for top rank in the long run and for Shushu Carrington. It's the type of, uh, 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 of, of win that would give his entire career cachet. It would also corral him the one belt 
that would be elusive, right? Because if he doesn't get take the shot against Ray Vargas, Ray Vargas, as a man, as a mandated, that's which is how you get most PBC fighters to make a fight with you if you're a man, a, a, a mandatory, right? If you don't get that shot against Ray Vargas and take your shot right now, you're not going to get him in the ring. You're not going to get that WBC belt. You're not going to get that PBC fighter, you know, on that resume further down the round. My suggestion is go get that belt, make that fight, win or lose. I think he would probably win, but win or lose. Get that belt because the other belts will always be within your grasp. The WBO, you know you can make a fight with Angelo Leo at any time. Uh, uh, is, is Angelo Leo the WBO? No, he's the IBF. The Oh, and then you know you can fight uh, uh, Espinosa at any time. He's got the WBO. So... And Nick Ball has, I believe, the WBA belt. Either the WBA or the IBF belt. Point is, you can make a fight with Nick Ball. You can make a fight with Espinosa. You can make a fight with Angelo Leo. The, the unicorn, the elusive unicorn would be Ray Vargas. And if you got, if you got him within your sights, you take that shot now. We'll see what top rank does. Anyway, um, this is the blight of the night. The fact that to your, that the, this fight day and, and it was a great fight, Michaela Meyer against Ryan, but it would have been a, a a better fight, a better night if it were to have been. On a Teofimo Lopez versus uh, uh, Elvis Rodriguez undercard in New York City, the Teofimo Lopez against Elvis Rodriguez headlining in New York City, uh, 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 Ryan against Mayor against Ryan on the undercard as as the the, the supporting co-main feature, then Xander Sias under them. And then Shushu Carrington, the whole fight card would have changed, you know. And Teofimo Lopez shows up at the fight when this could have been your fight card. If you're gonna, if you're not gonna fight that night, don't even show up at the card, man. I mean, really, man. Is what Teofimo Lopez doing? He might not fight the rest of the year. I don't know what he's waiting for. He's over here calling Terrence Crawford when clearly Crawford is about unifications at 154. You don't got a belt at 154. That man doesn't care about you. He's making five times the money that you are. He's got, he's running with Turkey Alashi, making deals against Fundora, moving up, has already been unified. Uh, 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 undisputed in two weight classes. Why are you calling this man out? You sound so stupid. Instead of building your name, you said you wanted to fight three, four times this year. Well, Top Rank offered you last Friday's card at Madison Square Garden. Your opponent was going to be Elvis Rodriguez. It would have been a fight that would have garnered a lot of interest, at least in New York, on the East Coast. Elvis Rodriguez has been wanting. That's why he signed with, 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 with Top Rank. He wants that fight. Freddie Roach wants that fight. And you over here acting like you too good to fight on a Friday night, which, by the way, is the reason why he didn't take the fight. He's been on record that, oh, I'm not a Friday night fighter. He's a Saturday night. He thinks he's got to be. Come on, man. Tio, you're not that big a star. I know that. Yes, you've accomplished a lot in the sport, but that doesn't translate to revenue producing 
uh, 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 ticket seller. You're not that. There's not enough Hondurans around for you to be that. If he were Puerto Rican, he'd probably be a top tier ticket seller, but he's not. He's a guy who's running around faking like he's from New York. He's not from New York. Nobody in New York gyms knows him. And I'm not in New York gyms, but that's what Shakur Stevenson says. That's what Edgar Berlanga says. The fighters on the East Coast in and around the New York area don't know you. Nobody knows you. I know for a fact you're from Florida. My boy Cesar Jr. Rivas know, saw you growing up in Florida gyms. And that's not bad. There are great fighters down there. Florida gyms are no joke. But you're, 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 you're faking the funk and co-opting uh, uh, somebody uh, 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 co-opting an identity, stealing identity, trying to you El Brooklyn, New York, City. like dude, you you didn't grow up in Brooklyn. You're from Florida. You know who T.O. reminds me of? He reminds me. He do. He's on some old Kamala Harris shit. <laughs> Kamala Harris ain't got a drop of African American blood in her. Wants to be referred to as black. And her whole thing is that she she went to a to a to a you know one of those what is it African American colleges whatever a historically black college but guess what you don't have to be black to go to a historically black college There's plenty of white kids in those historically black HSBCUs you know HSBCUs yeah you understand historically black universities yeah HBCUs. Something like that. Point is, that's what Tio for that's what Teofimo Lopez is on. Co-opting somebody else's history. You're not from New York, bro. Be you. You're a great fighter. That should be good enough. The way for Teofimo Lopez to get known is to fight three, four times a year. He's gotta do the triple G. Triple G. It was no Kazakhstan. A fans, he can and Triple G actually co-opted Mexican history. So, uh, oh, let me shut up on that. Don't say nothing. But still, really, what he did was get in the ring four times, five times a year on HBO, and knock people out. That's what Tio should be doing: getting into the ring three, four times a year, putting on spectacular performances, building himself up, building a bus, keeping the bus. That he's that, that 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 he's built off the wins off Lomachenko and and uh, Taylor, but no, instead he wants to hang out with Canelo, carry his belt, call out call out uh, 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 um, Terence Crawford, and end up turning down fight dates in nice venues, right? Because you're not a Friday night fighter. Meanwhile, Jaime Munguia for in fucking, where was it? Texas or somewhere? Uh, 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 Arizona on a, on a Friday night. He had no problem fighting on a Friday night. But you, you're too good. Jaime Munguia is three times the star that 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 uh, that Teofimo Lopez is. Don't argue. Jaime Munguia has a bigger fan base. He's got Mexicans. He got actual Mexicans behind him. He already fucking, he already did well on a pay-per-view. He wasn't too good to fight on a Friday night. But Tio, I'm too good for Friday night. That's that bullshit. You can't get nowhere like that. Moving on, let's go to the actual Mayor Ryan fight. Great fight. Great fight. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Michaela Mayer is one of my favorite female fighters. I like her better than Sinisa Strata. They're both a top rank, but I like, I believe Michaela Mayer is a better fighter. Technically, technically, she's better than a lot of women out there. You'd have to go to Clarissa Shields. 
and Amanda Serrano and Katie Taylor to find somebody who's better than Michaela Meyer. Okay? Those are the only women that you have to put ahead of Michaela Meyer in my book. Uh, 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 Serrano, Shields, Clarissa Shields, Amanda Serrano, Katie Taylor, and I think that uh, uh, Michaela would actually have beaten uh, 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 Katie Taylor. I think Michaela Meyer would have beaten Katie Taylor at 135 had they fought, to tell you the truth. Michaela Meyer is a problem. Plus, she hangs out all day and night with Bud and the boys and, and Bo Mac, and she's sparring them, and she's learned a lot. If she had more pop in her punches, she'd be devastated, but she's a female. So it is what it is, and it ain't what it ain't. So kudos to Michaela Meyer. Uh, what will she do moving forward? I feel like she should rematch Jonas, Natasha Jonas, which is a fight that she actually won. See, the funny thing about the, the, the Michaela Meyer uh, situation is that Michaela Meyer, despite having lost to Baumgartner, actually has grown her name after the loss more than Baumgartner. Baumgartner was relevant in relation to Michaela Meyer. She beat Michaela Meyer and then she went in and fought for undisputed. But nobody cared about that fight. That fight was on the undercard, right? Meanwhile, Michaela Meyer has gone on to headline in England several times. Well, at least against a Nicole, uh, uh, Jonas. And now she headlined against Ryan. So her star has moved up. Has She's maintained herself in, 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 on a big network uh, in championship fights. While Baumgartner had a fight on Brinks TV. Whatever that is. In some hellhole strip club uh, soundstage. In Atlanta, Georgia. Nobody saw that fight. Nobody cared about that fight. There's nobody. And, and then she, she ends up uh, what, getting a, 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 a no decision or something like that. Come on. God is good. I said it before. I said it a long time ago. Alicia Baumgartner fucked up the bag. She shit the bed. And blew the bag. The bag was against Michaela Meyer in a rematch. She needed to do an immediate rematch when top rank wanted to do it. Instead, she chose to go for undisputed, thinking that she could go to undisputed, get the belt, and then rematch Michaela Meyer for more money. But top rank said, no, 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 no. This is a woman's fight. And it's the type of fight that's only uh, 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 worth us putting, investing money if you strike the ore while it's hot. It had a shelf life. That's where Baumgartner didn't understand that the interest in her versus Mayer had a shelf life. And it was the instant rematch. Eddie didn't want to pay for it. Top Rock was willing to pay for it. She thought she was going to outsmart everybody and go for Undisputed and come back and renegotiate for more money against Mayor. It didn't work out like that. Now, Eddie doesn't want her. She's fighting on Brinks. She's not even on, 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 on the zone anymore. Her and her four belts were not on the zone. And Michaela Meyer is headlining in New York City, Madison Square Garden on an ESPN card. Who the thunk? It is what it is, and it ain't what it ain't. This is Boxing Aficionados, baby. I'm out.